Hello and welcome to What's Ten in Focus. I'm Marissa Zimmerman. And I'm Natalie Toy. What's Ten in Focus gives you a more in-depth look at students and staff at What's Ten High School, their achievements, activities, and so much more. On today's episode, you'll see which WHS students were named Wolverines and Rotarian of the Month, the meaning behind St. Patrick's Day, and how healthy eating habits can positively affect you. But first, Read Across America Week is upon us, and Adam Buckley takes a look at how the district celebrates it, as well as how reading is good for you. Read Across America Week began on March 2nd and it's here to remind us of the importance of reading. You may remember Read Across America Week from your younger days, but its message still rings true, even for older students. Read Across America Week begins on Dr. Seuss's birthday to commemorate his work. Seuss's books are used during this week to encourage elementary school students to read. It brings awareness um, to reading, and especially at the elementary level, just kind of get children to try to love reading. Um, it also is the week of Dr. Seuss's birthday, who is obviously one of the most famous authors um, at the elementary age. So that's another fun way to celebrate it. Getting children reading at an early age is great for their development. Read Across America Week promotes the benefits of reading at a young age, like cultivating writing and comprehension skills. All ages benefit from reading, even high school students and adults. Reading gives you a unique pause button for comprehension and insight, says Marianne Wolf, director of the Center for Reading and Language Research at Tufts University. Unlike a video or movie, reading a book demands the full attention of the brain. This brain stimulation helps in preventing dementia and Alzheimer's by reinforcing language skills. Part of when I was a kid, I loved being transported to like different worlds. I think the fantasy type of genre is more my thing. Like I love Lord of the Rings, the Harry Potter series. My favorite book as a kid was James and the Giant Peach. Like it just, I mean, I'll read anything. You know, historical fiction, your basic like summer romance novel. I really don't have a problem um, reading just about anything someone wants to hand me, but I probably prefer that more fantasy type fiction. According to the World Literacy Foundation, escaping to an imaginary world when times get tough is a proven way to decrease stress. Focusing on a book releases tension in the body, specifically in the jaw and the heart. Reading a physical book also provides a chance to get away from electronics. So it's really nice to escape and get away from the screen. So it's definitely a distressor for me, absolutely. Especially now, because I'm on the computer so much throughout the day doing homework and going on Google Meets and everything, um, it's nice to take a break from the screens. Read Across America Week primarily focuses on elementary school students, while there is no real way to encourage high school students to read. Like you do have to know your audience, what their interests are, because you want to find a book that speaks to that. A lot of people like to say audible books don't count, graphic novels don't count, they count. They're reading, the kids are sitting down and enjoying the book, they count. Reading is an easy and beneficial habit to make. The best way to ring in Read Across America Week is to grab whatever you like to read, whether it's an audiobook or paperback, and simply enjoy what you are reading. I'm Adam Buckley, Woodstown in Focus. It's easy to get into unhealthy eating habits, especially during these times. Riley Morrissey looks at ways to help stay on a healthy track. Healthy eating habits can be very beneficial for your mind and body. Having a healthy and balanced diet can be beneficial now and for your future. Studies have shown that a typical American diet exceeds the recommended intake levels in four categories. Everyone can struggle with maintaining healthy eating habits, whether it's because of lack of motivation, resources, social pressures, and more. Would I say it was hard for somebody to keep up with healthy eating? Um, I think it can be hard when you first start because you're kind of trying to break your old cycles of however you used to eat, whether that's good, bad, whatever, but it's hard when you first start, but I feel like after you get into the swing of things and you know what you like, your go-to meals, stuff like that, it all becomes really easy and it's, you don't even think about it. It's hard to always be healthy because sometimes you will crave a McDonald's hamburger and that's okay. It is also difficult when you don't have healthy options provided to you constantly, like 
veggies, and fruits. Although it might be difficult to keep up with healthy eating habits, motivation is an important role when keeping them. Thinking of the benefits or outcome of eating healthy might motivate or encourage you to make them. All right, what it motivates me is I, I need the energy. Um, I have three kids. I'm a phys ed teacher. So trying to consume more healthy foods um, to give me energy to keep me going throughout the day um, is obviously the best choice for me and really should be for anyone. The, the healthier your diet is, the more energy you're going to have, the better sleep you're going to have, the better you feel about yourself and things like that. Benefits can help motivate others to eat healthy. These benefits can affect not only your body, but your mind too. Some benefits are sleeping better, having more energy, and better concentration, which all lead towards a happier lifestyle. So maintaining a healthy diet overall keeps your body, your mind, your brain going. Okay, so having good health and nutrition habits just kind of sets you up for the rest of life. It can keep you um, healthy when it comes to diseases and sicknesses. It can keep you healthy. Like I said, your brain, your blood circulating, your heart moving. So maintaining a healthy diet just kind of overall is the foundation for your body and for your life. Gradually, making little differences to your diet is a great way to maintain and make healthy eating habits. There are many different programs that can help you make healthy eating habits, like Spark People. This website and app is free, which helps you customize healthy meal plans and more. But remember, what is most important is what works best for your own body. Although making healthy eating habits can be a struggle, they have a positive impact on our well-being. Not only can the benefits help you in the present, but also in the future. I'm Riley Marcy on Woodstown in Focus. The Wolverines of the Month and Rotarian of the Month for January were recently announced. Here's Willa Saran for a look at the recipients. Each month, two students are recognized as Wolverines of the Month and one for Rotarian of the Month. They are honored for their hard work and effort put forth. For the month of January, Olivia Mr. Kelly and William Reed were awarded Wolverines of the Month. Connor Batten was awarded Rotarian of the Month. Olivia Mr. Kelly is a senior at Woodstown High School. Her involvement in clubs and sports and her desire to do well has made her an excellent choice for Wolverine of the Month. In my time at Woodstown, I have been involved in many sports and clubs. Um, my freshman year, I did soccer, basketball, and spring track. Uh, I've continued to play soccer and track all the way through. Um, I'm also a wrestling manager this year. Uh, I've been involved in LMTI, Students in Action, Girls Action Team. Olivia has spent her four years at Woodstown involved in clubs and teams, creating lifelong friendships. The extracurricular that has meant the most would probably be girls soccer because we're not just a team, we're a family. And I could go to any one of those girls any given day, graduated, underclassmen, and they would be there for me. Like, we are a very tight-knit group of girls. And, I mean, it stinks that I can't see them now because we're still split, but I do. I love them all, and I miss them. As dedicated as Olivia is to her academics and activities here at Woodstown, she spends her time outside of school participating in other activities that better her community. I do volunteer at the Oldman's Township Municipal Alliance uh, Prevention of Substance Abuse, which stands, which is MAP, so that's the acronym. I've been volunteering there for my freshman year, or since my freshman year, and it's basically like the LMTI we have at Woodstown, but it's for Oldman's, which is where I'm from. Olivia's plan after high school includes going to college and becoming a neuropsychologist. William Reed is a senior at Woodson High School. William Reed is also Wolverine of the Month. He is a very involved student at Woodstown High School. I've done uh, soccer for four years um, for the school. I've done swim team for winter swim for two years and winter track for two years and then spring track for four years. So, and I also am involved in LMTI. I spent a couple years in FBLA. Out of all of the extracurricular activities William has been a part of, LMTI has meant the most to him. 
Honestly, uh, one of the most significant things for me was uh, LMTI. Originally, when I joined it, I just thought it was going to be just any old club. But uh, I ended up going to a summer camp program for it over one summer. And uh, it was just like a life changing experience for me. I learned that like, I mean, I always knew that like, you know, there's a lot of different people out there, but it really made me realize like, oh, I really need to open up to people because that's like a really important thing. So it just kind of made me realize like how diverse of a world like we live in and just how many different people are just in your school. So that was probably really big for me and also just um, how to be involved with the community. His future plans include going to college for business and see where that takes him. The Rotarian of the Month for January is Connor Batten. Connor has been a quite involved student at Woodstown. He has played football, track and field, and wrestling and was involved in the marching band for a couple of years. Outside the school, he has volunteered for food drives, roadside cleanup at the Raritan Fire Hall, and for veteran services. He has been a part of Boy Scouts for several years, being the activity that means the most to him. Uh, probably Boy Scouts it's taught me a lot of lessons, just been around for a while, just showed me a lot of things, taught me a lot of things. Connor's motivation to do so well has been to get a better job, more money, and a better life. This motivation has helped cultivate him into the excellent student he is today. Uh, I'm going to go to college, get uh, my uh, bachelor degree in uh, BSN, medical degree, become a nurse, and uh, hopefully become a nurse and uh, get my uh, master's degree while I'm working. Congratulations to the students awarded for the month of January. Keep up the excellent work. I'm Willow Saran for Woodstown Info. When you think of March, what color comes to mind? Probably green, right? That's because St. Patrick's Day is celebrated on March 17th. So what is the history of it and what traditions are common? Sadie Honeycutt has the report. St. Patrick's Day is the day for Irish heritage. March 17th marks the day where people go out with their family and have fun. Many people treat St. Patrick's Day differently with the way they see people, the way they celebrate, and the traditions they have. In 403 AD, a 16 year old boy named Patrick was taken from his home in Britain and sent to Ireland where he spent six years in captivity before he escaped. Then he spent 15 years becoming a Christian minister. He wanted to help poor people build a Christian faith while keeping some of their traditions and their new practices. Later, Patrick was proclaimed a saint of Ireland. St. Patrick's Day in my family um, over the past couple years hasn't been the same as it was when I was a kid. Um, my grandfather on my dad's side was the Irish one. Um, I am very much Irish. I just remember um, all the different types of food we used to have when I was a kid, which I said we, you know, since everybody's passed on, we don't really, you know, um, carry on that tradition. Now the holiday celebrates the anniversary of St. Patrick's death. Irish families would normally attend church in the morning and enjoy feasts and celebrations in the evening. She would always attend church on St. Patrick's Day and, you know, celebrate the fact, you know, she would tell the story of St. Patrick um, and, you know, that he had, you know, gotten rid of all the snakes, which they didn't really have snakes. It wasn't, it was more like a symbolism for getting rid of the pagans um, from Christianity. And, um, you know, she would tell those stories and those are some of the things that she, you know, she imparted to my brother and I growing up. Um, the celebration of the heritage is held all over the world on the 17th, with people making ham and cabbage, soda bread, and corned beef. Leprechauns are known as tiny fairy men that live underground and have magical powers that can serve for good or bad. They are said to deceive humans and serve as a warning against greed. Tales of these creatures came about in the 8th century when legends started circulating among the Celtics. Because four-leaf clover was supposed to be lucky, but the clover itself only has three leaves, and it was supposed to represent the um, Christian tradition of, like, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. St. Patrick's Day celebrates Irish culture, the arrival of Christianity, and the saint who brought us this new faith. So now on, even if you're not Irish, you can celebrate with some traditions. I'm Sadie Honeycutt with Sound and Focus. And that will do it for What's Town in Focus this month. We hope you enjoyed the show. For Marissa and the rest of the crew, I'm Natalie. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next month.